Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Friday evening, May 25th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center at your local NWS office and your local emergency management officials for the latest information. Well, here's our tropical disturbance in the Caribbean that we talked about yesterday. This has now been designated subtropical storm Alberto, the first storm of the 2018 hurricane season. Still just as disorganized as it was yesterday. Not a lot has really changed. It has moved out over the water. You can see a, a swirl in low-level clouds indicating the low-level center right here, although this is quickly becoming irrelevant as this is an orphaned uh, dry swirl within a larger broad low. And uh, this, this really is not anchoring the system in any way. Uh, the mid-level center is up here somewhere, and this is likely to become the focus region for where the new surface center will develop sometime tomorrow, uh, as most of the bear clinic forcing driving thunderstorm development will be in the Yucatan Channel tonight. And uh, this mid-level center will likely build down to the surface and take over as this starts to move north into the Gulf of Mexico. So this, this will become irrelevant pretty quickly. But recon plane did go in there and found uh, that swirl there with a fix of 1,006 millibars. And there was actually a second center at flight level uh, that shows up here. You can see the, the easterly winds and the westerly winds here. Uh, this is at about 1,000 meters up. Uh, this buoy at the surface showed uh, winds out of the east-southeast in almost the opposite direction. And the drop sound that was dropped here did confirm that uh, the buoy is right. The winds are out of the southeast of the surface, but the plane is also right. At flight level, the winds actually reverse direction within a thousand meters above the ocean surface. All this really indicates is that uh, this is not a surface low yet, but it's pretty close. The mid-level center up here is getting close to the surface, and we will likely see it take over at some point tonight or tomorrow, and uh, this will likely decay and dissipate. So this is going to, to jump up into the Yucatan Channel and then gradually make its way into the eastern Gulf of Mexico tomorrow and Sunday. And uh, rains are already spreading into South Florida and will continue propagating northward over the next day or two gradually. And some of the heaviest rain totals from the storm may occur in South Florida, which will be under the rain shield of this system for uh, perhaps several days in a row. Here's the water vapor imagery showing the upper trough that continues to dig in the Gulf of Mexico here. It's uh, getting thinner and more amplified, and it's helping to, to focus convection near the western tip of Cuba in the Yucatan Channel, and this is what's helping develop this mid-level low, and probably eventually the new surface low for Alberto tonight. And you can see all the dry air showing in in dark colors over the Yucatan Peninsula and over the entire western Gulf of Mexico, really. And uh, this will become quite relevant later, uh, because what's going to happen over the next couple of days is Alberto, currently disorganized, will start to acquire some organization as it moves up into the southeast Gulf because it's interacting with the upper trough. And although it is shearing the system, it will be able to help it organize to a point through non-tropical processes. And as it strengthens as a result, Alberto, it will start to develop a more coherent and stronger circulation. But once it does that, all this dry air in this part uh, of the area to its west will inevitably get drawn in to whatever circulation is spinning around in here. And that's going to come into play uh, later this weekend, probably on Sunday. We can see this on the GFS as an example. And this is 24 hours from now, or well, a little less, Saturday morning. You can see Alberto moving into the Gulf, and you can see most of the moisture on the eastern side. All the dry air sitting off to the west, not much happening yet. Uh, by Sunday, though, Alberto has strengthened substantially, and so we have a strong circulation counterclockwise, and it's starting to entrain this dry air and wrap it in to the storm circulation. And you're going to see this continue to the point where, on a lot of these models, the dry air is really getting in to the inner core of this system. And if this happens, which it is likely to, uh, this is basically what you would call uh, an occlusion of the storm. And it's, it's secluding a lot of this dry air into the core along with the moisture that was there. And what this will probably do is prevent significant thunderstorm development for some period of time near the storm center. And this could even cause some weakening for a brief time. Uh, the question after this point will be how much longer does Alberto have over water because if you give this uh, kind of a system enough time shear will be lower by this point and uh, if you give it a day over water it could begin to mix out this dry air and start developing new, th new thunderstorms and uh, become a bona fide tropical cyclone with central convection that could strengthen further prior to landfall but it's not yet clear 
whether or not the system will have enough time for this. Some models do develop this pretty strongly as this dryer gets wrapped in and it moves ashore. I'm not quite sure I buy uh, some of the strength on some of these models uh, given how quickly uh, they show Alberto recovering from this dry intrusion. It may take a little longer than some of the models show, but there's still uncertainty, uncertainty there. Right now the National Hurricane Center expects this to not become a hurricane and have winds of about 60, 65, 70 miles an hour, somewhere in that range at the time of landfall, but there is uh, low confidence in that at the moment given the complexity of the situation. And uh, this is something we're going to have to just keep an eye on on Sunday and into Monday as the system is evolving. Some things we just can't know just yet given how disorganized it is. But regardless of how strong the winds get with the system, that is not likely to be the primary concern for residents along the southeastern U.S. coastline and inland states here. Uh, rainfall is the big deal here with uh, WPC still showing amounts of several inches and perhaps a foot of rain could fall in some areas of the Gulf Coast, especially near the landfall point, which is currently expected to be somewhere along the central Gulf Coast from southeast Louisiana to the western Florida Panhandle. Somewhere in here is expected to, to see the center of Alberto. That will be one focus region for rainfall. Another big focus region for rainfall will likely be the Florida Peninsula. It's possible that the dry air coming up on the east side of Alberto will help reduce rainfall totals over a portion of the southeast U.S. and northeast Gulf Coast. You can kind of see that in the uh, dip in the totals here on the WPC outlook, but you can see that's still several inches of rain anyway. So lots, lots of water is going to come down here, and the heaviest amounts will depend on exactly where the storm center tracks. Some of the heaviest totals will likely be near the landfall point. And uh, given all the rain that fell last week and the week before that, uh, uh, there's concern for high rivers and uh, river flooding in addition to general flash flooding from too much water falling in too short a period of time over this large area. Even inland you can see how much rain is falling in the inland areas of Georgia, South Carolina, and Alabama. Uh, so this is not just a coastal event, uh, but there will also be coastal impacts, namely storm surge. Uh, there is a storm surge watch up from the Big Bend of Florida to the Mississippi River Delta. Uh, this is due to the strong southerly winds coming up on the east side of Alberto, pushing the ocean toward the shore, and this storm surge watch means that within 48 hours, normally dry ground could be inundated by ocean water. So the normal rules apply here. Storm surge is always the biggest impact from tropical cyclones and uh, structures and items and people near the coastline are at strong risk when water uh, can come onto normally dry ground and uh, mess things up. In addition to the water hazards, there may be a localized wind threat near the core of Alberto as it moves ashore. This is the official forecast track bringing the center onto the central Gulf Coast somewhere between eastern Louisiana and the western Florida panhandle. And you can see the tropical storm watch in yellow here, which means winds in excess of 40 miles per hour may occur within 48 hours as landfall is expected sometime on Monday. And uh, this will be moving fairly slowly up uh, through the Gulf of Mexico. So it will have a couple of days during which it may be able to strengthen. And uh, the current forecast expects peak winds in excess of 60 miles per hour by the time of landfall. Right now, Alberto is not expected to become a hurricane, uh, but things can always change in the tropics. And so we'll keep an eye on it over the weekend just in case it gets more organized than currently expected. Uh, but right now, the primary threat is expected to be water-related, heavy rains, storm surge on the coast, and the potential for flooding both coastal and inland, uh, primarily near the point of landfall and east of the point of landfall in the central and eastern Gulf Coast and inland regions of the southeastern U.S. Stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest information and for specific local forecasts, look to your local National Weather Service office. You can find that at weather.gov. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.